Here we're gonna look at a nice and quick geometry problem. So let's say we've got a parallelogram, which I've drawn in yellow, and it has altitudes three and four. And then inside of that, we have a circle, which is not quite inscribed. It kind of ooches out the top of it. And so notice it is tangent to the bottom line segment of the parallelogram, the left and the right line segment of the parallelogram, but it goes outside of the top of the parallelogram. And our goal is to find the area of this bit which is outside of the parallelogram. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So the real trick that we're gonna start with is how to measure these altitudes of the parallelogram. So generally you measure the altitude going from a vertex to the opposite sign at a right angle. But we can actually transpose that across this bottom line segment as long as we're both normal to this line segment and this line segment and that length will give you the same altitude or the same measurement I should say. That means we can do the same thing across the other side as well. So let's maybe put that together and see what we've got. So let's first calculate the altitude in the vertical direction. So I'm gonna put a line segment between this point, which is the intersection of the circle and the bottom edge of the parallelogram. And then also so that it will intersect with the top edge of the parallelogram at a 90 degree angle. So that'll be something like this. Okay, good. And we know that the whole length of this is three because we have uh, altitudes of this parallelogram three and four and that is the shorter length. Okay, great. And then next what we can do is calculate the other altitude by going from this intersection point of the circle with the parallelogram over to this one. So let's maybe draw that in. Good, and we know that that entire length is four, again, because it's the other altitude. Okay, but notice that this purple line segment is also a diameter of the circle. So that tells us that the radius of the circle, well, it's half the diameter. So in other words, the radius of this circle, maybe we'll call it R, that is equal to two. So that's actually some really good information. Now let's like flesh out this little part that we wanna find the area of. So I'm gonna take a point from the center of the circle. So we haven't proven this is the center, but that's not super hard to do. And then we'll draw a radius over to this intersection point of the circle with the line segment and another radius over to this intersection point of the circle and the line segment. And notice I know that both of these have length two, and that's because they're both radii of the circle. So now let's talk about this length right here. So we know the total length of the blue line segment is three, but this portion of that length is also a radius of the circle. So this length down here is two, making this remaining length up here one. And then we might as well complete this. So this makes a right triangle up here. We can complete the right triangle with the Pythagorean theorem, and we'll see that the length of this line segment will be the square root of two squared minus one squared, so that'll be the square root of three. Now, we also might wanna figure out the angle measurement of this angle right here. And we can do that with some trigonometry. So let's notice that the cosine of this angle is gonna be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in other words, cosine of theta in this case is going to be one half, but that's a well-known value of cosine, so we can now say that theta equals pi over three. And now we're ready to calculate our area. So maybe we'll write it like this, area of this region, which this region is also known as a segment of a circle. So that's gonna be equal to, well, we can think about this as the area of the sector of the circle. So let's write it like this, area of the sector with angle equal to two pi over three. So why is it two pi over three instead of pi over three? Because we have twice theta here defining this whole sector of the circle. And then from that, we need to subtract the area of the triangle where we have a base of, well, it's gonna be root three plus root three. So that's gonna be two root three and a height of one. That's because of this distance right here. So now we can use well-known formulas for each of these. So area of a sector of a circle, well, that's given by one half 
radius squared times the angle measurement. Well, and then area of a triangle, well, that's just one half base times height. That's even more well known. But now we're essentially done. So here we have one half times two squared times two pi over three. That's the area of this entire pizza slice. So like the sector of the circle minus one half times two root three times one. That's the area of that triangle. So now putting all of this together, we see that we have four pi over three minus the square root of three. So that's the area of this little capped bit here. And that's a good place to stop.